Hi, everybody. It's Fridays with Sandy, and we've got a real interesting character today. He presents the question of, how can you get into Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton Business School if you graduate from Notre Dame, which is not a typical theater school to them? And on top of that, you don't have a traditional work background. Uh, let me give you the answer. Everything else has to be really, really good. And I think our volunteer, our target, our subject for this week, Benjamin um, Fouch, rhymes with couch, uh, uh, checks a lot of boxes. John, do you want to uh, introduce Ben? And then we'll have Ben uh, show his pretty face as well. Sure. Well, Ben, uh, as you mentioned, meant, uh, went to Notre Dame, uh, graduated summa. He's working for a big four consulting firm. Uh, he's on the young side. He's had a, a full year of work. Uh, but uh, during college, he was working 56 hours a week on a startup. Uh, so he's thinking he might apply this fall uh, and take a shot. And if not, he has plenty of time to reapply later on because of his age. Okay, uh, that's about 90% accurate. Ben, do you want to correct that and tell us what you're doing this year? <laughs> what I'm doing this year? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm spending my time. I have an hours controlled contract with my firm where I do corporate development on the M&A side. So it's valuing Your company. firm is your startup firm? Uh, no, sorry, that's Booz Allen Hamilton. Right, okay. So you, you worked out a deal with Booz Allen yes. where you're working for X hours a week. Correct. And you're helping them do what? Helping them evaluate acquisition opportunities out in the market. Good. In terms of okay. Capabilities tell us, now you've got a real interesting startup here that you've worked for a while. It's it's called Dark Horse Sports Recruiting. But that's right. Yeah. That, but that, that does that, that's a little misleading. Uh, as I understand it, you help people get sports scholarships to colleges, right? We help high school student athletes get recruited, not only for athletics, but also academics, leveraging both sides of the application to maximize the outcomes, both financially and in terms of admissions. Wow, uh, that's great. Uh, Thank you. So, so you're running those two jobs and- uh, What a good elevator pitch. He got that down really concise. <laughs> yes, that, that's excellent. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how, how many, uh, I think a lot of our viewers might be interested in that. How, how many, uh, how many uh, students have you helped and what do you typically do? Right now we have, as of this morning, I believe it's 139 active clients. We've had oh. now going on three years of students that we've helped place. Um, you know, we, you know, in any given day, I might be doing work on 10 to 15 of their academic profiles. What's the value add of your consulting? People ask me this all the time. So I'm interesting to talk to another consultant here. Yeah, we typically get between Last year was about 4.9 times the return on their money. This year is looking more like 4.5 to 4.6. But our ballpark is always, our goal is always keep it over four and a half times return on their initial investment in the service. Oh, you mean for what they pay you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the value add in the most literal sense. Mm -hmm. How do you, what's the difference between someone applying themselves and going to you guys? I mean, the whole point of it, I think you guys understand this really well, right? Just like in undergrad admissions and MBA admissions, there's information asymmetry. And the more research you do, the more you know about how the system works, the better you can articulate who you are, what your story is. And so we help students, even as freshmen, begin to think about over the course of their career, how they build a story that is the story of them, that is authentically them and not, um, not waste the time that they have. Yeah. And how much of it is, you see, when, when I read this, uh, before I spoke to you, what I thought you were doing was helping athletes who were not superstar athletes, you know, who tend to be recruited all by themselves. But the, the athletes below that, I thought that was your uh, sweet spot. Is that wrong? We do, you know, we do help the superstars and I personally love working with the superstars, but uh, we also have a lot. We have a lot of students who are, you know, three to three, five GPA kids because helping them can make the difference between getting, 50%, 75% full ride, and not even getting looked at by certain programs. Yeah, okay. So you, you're doing great work with Booz Allen. You're doing great work with your uh, um, admissions consulting business. Why do you want an MBA? 
Yeah, so I think there are a couple of reasons why. One of them is a lot of the people that I have been mentored by and respect a lot have gone and gotten MBAs at these programs and talk about that experience, how it's formative from a management perspective, how you think about how you manage, how you think about how you relate with people. And with my time at Dark Horse especially, you know, I've managed three people. And in doing so, I've had a lot of, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot, I've grown a lot. I think I've become a much better manager, but thinking about that piece is really important to me. And also I think, when I think long term, you know. Yeah, Let, let's get to that. What, what, what job would you want after? Yeah. yeah that's so that's my, an important question for you. Of course. My whole goal with the first few years during college and post was to get as much experience as possible and to build institutions that last when I left. We've gotten Dark Horse, especially to a place where I'm very comfortable, kind of taking a step back. Can I give you a tip here? For mm -hmm. purposes of this, you know, this is kind of like uh, behind the scenes consulting here. Yep. If you could just take the rhetoric down a level and talk to me. <laughs> sure. Mono yeah. a mono, if that's the right word here. Yeah. Particularly no. with John listening. He, he has a hard <laughs> time understanding this. Yep. No, I, I think Ben is a, is a model of clarity. He's incredibly articulate. He's very impressive. Uh, he gets right to the point, but it's almost too polished. Huh? Yeah, let me say, I would, uh, if I was giving you a mock interview, yeah. you're an easy guy to dislike. I'm giving Whoa. it to you. I'm giving it wow. to you All now. right. <laughs> well, then. Why? I'm because giving, because he's so polished and straight. smooth? Yes. Ooh. Yeah. That's well, if you want to cut, cut straight to it, you know, ultimately, I want to do search fund. Uh -huh. The whole point of doing these experiences, I want to get a bunch of skills and tool, set, tool sets and skills that I could go off and then help manage the business and have that freedom to grow something, not from the startup stage, from, from, but from a running stage. And what would the roadmap to that be? Well, explain to our uh, the poets part of the poets and quants group what a search fund is. Yeah, so a search fund is really cool. It's this idea that you can find businesses that are smaller than like you know small cap private equity, and a lot of these business owners are looking to sell. So you can go in and get a group of investors and then buy that business relatively cheap compared to other larger businesses, and then manage it. So it's a chance to get leadership in a company really early and be kind of learning by experience as opposed to theory. And so typically to do that, you need to go to a top MBA program to get access to the funding from these funds that are very focused on talent coming out of those schools. Wow, it's almost like micro PE. <laughs> yeah, exactly. PE, it's it's right? a variant of PE for sure. Yeah. What's, what's the roadmap to that, Ben? Yep, you know, typically it's, so I've talked to a lot of investors in the space and you get some work experience, you, ideally have experience as an operator. So like you get nuts and bolts accounting, like act like bank reconciliations, all of that. And then you go to one of these MBA programs and that's almost like the stamp to show that like you're qualified. Yeah, that like post MBA, what's the roadmap? I agree with yep. you. Gotcha. You will typically get signed on with a fund. They'll give you a salary and you'll spend on average two years going out and exploring, trying to find opportunities. And if you find the opportunities because they give you the salary and these resources, they get first rights to make an investment. In the business with you running. So they, they, hire, they search funds hire scouts almost at, right out of MBA programs? Exactly. And those scouts typically when they find the business will become the operator. Yeah, I have a friend who does the front end of this. Uh, he's not the operator, but boy, he does really well. And it's a lot of cultivation. You know, in many cases you have uh, small companies that are owned in a family and there's no son or daughter who wants it exactly. and they're at the end of the line, but it's, uh, you know, it's profitable, but it could be run much more efficiently and more thoughtfully. And, uh, and the guy wants to unload and get liquid. And, um, yeah, no, th I, I understand this entirely. Yeah. And it gets me excited because it's, I'm from like rural America and you, you can find business in rural America and you can be oh like God, yeah. woven into the fabric of that community. That's really special. I love that. And those Here's are the nice. best businesses because they're also in here. Yeah. where there's little competition. Exactly. And esoteric parts and things like that. I believe me, I get this totally. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Maybe he can uh, just discover your business, John. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you. <laughs> you could Our be margins ready. are too high for Ben. You, you could be ready to sell. Oh no! Ready to sell. But you know, okay, but but that means hooking up post MBA with a PE firm. Yes or no? Yeah, typically. Okay, you do. 
which you know, uh, PE firms tend to want to hire people with previous PE experience, and and admissions officers are wary of people who want to go into PE without that experience. If you're a searcher, though, that's that's the that's, that's the new style of target, right? Yeah. If you're the searcher, which is what I want to do, you bear a lot of the risk. You put in the sweat equity, and you know I've talked to these funds, and. It's about having an experience and a background. That's well, here's, here's the question. Do, do you know people who've been hired for these funds right out of the MBA? What was their background? It's a mix. Um, a lot of them come from, they'll do consulting or they'll do banking. But the pain point that I identified when talking with the investors is they want more people who have actually run something or done it. You know, like I said, bank reconciliation, doing the cash flow stuff. It's, it's really, they're dying for people who have been boots on the ground in small businesses. Yeah, and, and your, your undergraduate degree at Notre Dame was- Let me say something, let me right? interrupt you. I got a feeling what they're really looking for are people with real elite prestige backgrounds. It, this sounds like PE plus. Maybe so, well, I disagree. You, you, know, but... well, you may know more about, but that's my instinct. Am I wrong? Based, I on, say, your, based on your- I would say you are, yeah. I mean, I, you know, one of the guys I talked to was you know he raced nascar until he got injured and then did a sales role in the midwest before he went to hbs and then went in directly into doing that and he's been one of the most successful search funders there is i think this is one of the few spaces where it's really rewards you for having that no, no, no. what did he do that the race car driver what did he do right after business school i believe he went straight into a search fund all right well if that's true that contradicts my point but boy that sounds like a Oh, argument by anecdote isn't the best so you know you, you could still be right but that's Here's what i gotta say you know the number of people who actually would be interested in this and know anything about it are very very few number one right uh that's good number two ben uh displays an amount of self-confidence yep. uh and and clarity that i think you know takes him out of the pile uh and i see written on his forehead wharton all over uh, yeah but is he, uh, if, if that's true, Ben, are you trying to wash it off? Yeah, I think I would. I mean, this, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I mean, I think Warren's a phenomenal school, but yeah. I've been really drawn by the people I've met. One, number one, Harvard Business School grads, because they're the ones I see doing really interesting things that depart like the classic paths. Number two, U Chicago, because I just love the intellectual rigor that people from that program have brought. Chicago would be good for you, too. Yeah, I love U Chicago. And then number three, Stanford, because of their emphasis on like the soft skills, right? I was out there with the class and they were talking about, you know, they have a class they call touchy feely. Yes, oh, yeah. of course. That's really important. That's really, really important as a manager. Yeah. And I'll tell you this too. Stanford puts a higher percentage of its class into PE than any other business school in the world. And in fact, more than Wharton, Columbia, Chicago combined. Huh. Yeah. Do you want to know Sandy Kreisberg's explanation of that? Uh, they bring in a lot of people with finance backgrounds. It's it's not location, location, location. It's <laughs> location, location, admissions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, meaning, meaning brand prestige and platinum in, platinum out. Yeah. 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 In a in a Silicon Valley setting. However, yep. though, however, you know, you look if you look at Stanford, their fellowship packages recently have had a strong skew to people coming from, say, the Midwest. They're really trying to get more diversity of their class from that. So I think there's an opportunity for candidates who are interested in that field in that space. Okay, Ben, oh, yeah. that's, okay, so that's a get, really good let's... point. Sandy, that's a really good point. Uh, Stanford is in a bad place in terms of being a truly national school because it draws very few people from the Midwest and puts very few people in the Midwest. What happens is people who go to Stanford don't want to leave the Bay Area. And so they oh, wow. have full ride, literally, they have full ride scholarships uh -huh. for people who commit to go and work in the Midwest. And, and, the, and the first three people who just won these fellowships, one was raised on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. nice. Okay. One was, one was born and raised in St. Louis and educated at Cornell and works for 3M as an uh, engineer. Yeah. Uh, and the third one, I can't remember exactly because they were actually born in California, although raised in the Midwest somewhere. But here's what that that's all about. If, if you can get into that program, you're going to have a full ride. You don't have to pay a penny of tuition. Yeah. And uh, and they're dying for people. OK, is this a deal where if you don't go back to the Midwest, you've got to pay back? The, yes. The loan, yep. et cetera, et cetera. They hold you accountable. Loan forgiveness. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if Ben goes out, gets in, he gets seduced by the Bay Area. Like America. Oh, man, he's got yeah. a big bill. Oh, boy. Hefty, hefty, hefty. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> hey, Ben, you're, you're, you're a real interesting guy. You're uh, still working on likable. You're a smooth guy. You're, you're a likable guy. I'm a lot of maturity you. for his age. You, you, a lot you, of maturity. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. You're a likable guy for almost every group of people except the uh, social justice warriors on the admissions committees, mm. uh, the MBA moms, social justice warriors. They, they, I'm telling you, buddy, I'm, I'm not jerking you around here. They could, they could take a, uh, they, they might say, you know, this guy is just, too slick for me, you know, uh, he's okay, he's smart, he's done a lot. Uh, something about him rubs me the wrong way. So Ben, That's one very, piece of advice. Very subtle. Yeah. When you have conversations with admissions people, yeah. find a vulnerability uh, in your story or in yourself. No, you're willing that, to that's give... a nice piece of advice, but here's, <laughs> here's, a, better, here's a better piece of Oof. advice. You're not gonna change them. I'm, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not trying to change them. Don't sell. Okay. We, we, this is good advice for any Harvard business yeah. school interview. Don't sell. They're not looking for you to jump on the question and, and run it back 30 yards. They're just looking for you to catch the ball and say, you threw the ball. I caught the ball. Do you understand the difference? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard, though, speaking to your point about coming from Notre Dame or other schools that might not be the typical feeders, you know, yeah. you kind of, there's at least a pressure as someone looking at it from the outside in that you have to kind of have that story, right? Like, pe like you've, you've, got, you've got the story naturally. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to press it. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'll take it on board. Okay. Look, and incidentally, I, Notre Dame is a great university. Everyone loves it. Notre Dame. Uh, are you Catholic? I am, yeah. Okay, another good reason why you went there. So, hey, it's it's um, it's it's not like it's uh, what what's 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 the term I'm looking for? A no name school with a bad reputation. Yeah. Now you're right. It's not a feeder school, but on the other hand, it's a re highly respectable university that will get you cred at Harvard and Stanford. Oh, I'm going to say something that's going to get me tarred and feathered in about eighteen different. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, buckle up. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I'm the one who should buckle up. <laughs> Deep in the recess of the typical Stanford-Harvard-Wharton admissions officer, particularly uh, uh, the MBA moms from the Northeast who <laughs> comprise a business school admissions committee, you mentioned Notre Dame. If you, if you had one of these things, these electrodes in their head, that told you what the first thing they think of is before they filter it. You understand? You're with me? Mm -hmm. They think drunk kids. That's what they think. Get out. Really? The yeah. Fighting Irish? <laughs> Who would have yeah, guessed? Fighting is right. <laughs> Come for a football Saturday and you will, you'll understand why they feel that way. <laughs> hmm. I, I got no horse. I got no dog in this fight. I, I'm just telling you what the mind of an admissions officer is. Yeah, but every yeah. week Ben went to the prayer group in the Catholic Center. There we go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it's a ben, what was your GPA? Uh, I, it was just... 3 eight, three nine is a summa. Okay, he, he didn't five. spend too much time being drunk with the 3-9. Three 3-9-5 nine. Three nine is what you said on your yeah, resume. It's like a 3 nine five one, I think. Yeah, okay, so they're not yeah, going to think good. that. I mean, I think it's the same situation as, you know, a large state school where there's an assumption people could be partying, but ultimately it's your own story, right? Any institution right. doesn't define the individual. The question that makes you interesting for general consumption is how does somebody from Notre Dame get into Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton? Mm -hmm. The answer is, number one, you, you, you really need that finger coming up correctly. Yeah, that is my... <laughs> pointer finger. I think that's what they call it. It's not my middle finger. Number one, you really need, you really need powerful stats and you've got them. You've got a 395 year summa and you've got a GRE that translates 
into a 730, 740G mat. And then what you, what you need is powerful work experience. In your case, your story is a little complicated, but what you've done is very, very impressive. Yeah. So you can overcome the Notre Dame difficulty. The fact it's not a feeder school. My advice to you is just talking to you and listening to you and hearing your story. My advice is if you get into an interview situation, just don't sell as much as your, maybe your natural instinct is. You, I've been doing natural... sales for a long time for my company. It's kind of ingrained, but I'll work on it. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. I, I'm just telling you here, man. Ben, what's the biggest mistake you've made so far? Whew. Um, it depends on what area. If you're talking for, with my startup, we lost $100,000 almost right off the bat after we hired people. And so they're How'd constantly you do that? We made it a partnership with a guy who was running one of the largest football skill camps in the country. And it came in through referrals through two new hires we made who were like our signature hires. It was a big deal. And we had made forecasts, projections. You know, it was supposed to be a multi-million dollar deal. Well, we didn't take in the human element, which was there was a transition within their team that led to a change in how they staffed all their camps. And it just exploded. So their, you know, their number of attendees went down by 80, 90%, which meant when we were doing it on a you know per camp basis, our revenue went from that went down by eighty or ninety percent, and we staffed all the camps. So right off the bat, we hired more people, we built out a new division, and then promptly lost hundred thousand dollars. That's uh, that's humbling, and I think don't you think, Sandy, that's a story that should come out somewhere? Maybe I'm talking about the big picture here. That story is going to come out or not come out. What I'm talking about is. How, how, how Ben presents himself yeah. day in and day out. Right. As to that story, yeah, it's a good story. I had a little trouble following it, so you might, you might tighten it up. Made a bad deal, lost the money, recovered, and came back stronger. Yeah, and what was the basis of the bad deal? The basis of the bad deal was we bad were judgment. Judging. Yeah, bad judgment, trusting in our personal relationships and financial forecasts more than our own kind of intuition that, yeah that's that's the answer you know what sandy's saying is kind of is, is really uh, absolutely true particularly with harvard and stanford where the the odds are so much against you because there are so many great candidates that um just a little inflection or something that they pick up will oh, in terms knock of you out. look this is this is the first commandment of getting into HBS or the first piece of wisdom, they're looking to reject people. Right. They're looking to reject people. It just, they to. Nobody, like to, nobody likes to make decisions. You, you make it easy for them. They go, you know something, that guy rubs me the wrong way, he's glib, and I didn't understand his long story, and he's a show off, and you know, he's the kind of guy that thrives at Wharton, so goodbye. Yes. This is what I think. Not a right review. Okay. That's why I think. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you know? what the. I'm telling you how yeah. you're not going to get in. Yeah. So I. I think Ben. Here's here's Ben's dilemma. He's going to apply to Harvard, Stanford, Chicago, and Wharton. He's going to get into Wharton in Chicago. His big decision is, does he accept the offer, or does he wait another year and reapply and hope to get into Harvard, Stanford after he's learned a few things more about how to work the system. Huh? Hey, you remember, remember what Dee said uh, before she left a year before, 10% of the enrolled class at Harvard Business School had been rejected before, 10%. Yeah, th th uh, that is true. So to our reapps out there, that's worth knowing. The reapplicant admit rate is the same as the general admit rate. What does that got to do with Ben? Uh, I, th I think, uh, he's going to get into Chicago and Wharton. I think he's not going to get into Harvard and Stanford. I'd like to know what you think. And then I think, I think he's going to, I think he's had, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's do as advertised. Here yeah. is my <laughs> handicap. Okay? I, I think, I think your chances at, uh, at, at Harvard are pretty good. If you can present yourself in a serviceable way, serviceable. No, no, oh, okay. no. Serviceable is a term of art. If you, can, if you can just capture everything that we've discussed in this past uh, half hour, 
uh, mm -hmm. in, in a way that's clear, they'll go, boy, this guy's really impressive. Uh, his his um, company is very impressive. And his work at Booz Allen is very impressive. If you have a Booz Allen, um, uh, uh, you know, official confirm that mm -hmm. in a recommendation. And if there's someone who can confirm the company stuff, you've got very high stats. You, you're a, you're a real, real solid guy. So I think your chances at Harvard are very good. I also think they're good at Wharton and Chicago. Give a percentage, uh, Sandy. Oh man. I think, I think your chances of being interviewed at Harvard are like 60, 65, 70%. And then you're facing the fact that half of the people who get interviewed don't get in. Well, not half. That 40% uh, of the people who get interviewed don't get in. So I can't do those numbers, but. Well, that brings it down to 30, 35%, right? Yeah, but that's, that's what I offer as a high number. That is a very high number for Sandy. Right. I'm just gonna tell you, okay? Very I, high. I will take it. Will particularly, take given, it. particularly given your age. Yeah, I'm extraordinary. Yeah, I, I think that you, you read older, that'll help. And um, they're, they're, they, they, they're, they're, they need to balance out the class on all accounts. And you help balance it out in terms of background, age, where you're coming from. You've got a lot going for you. Wharton in Chicago, you're going to, give him, you, you're going to get the 50% on him? Yeah, boy, he should get into those places. Yeah. Really, with a serviceable execution. Now, here, here's the deal. Sandy he, never he goes beyond countless. 50%. He, he interviews countless at Wharton and, yeah. and Chicago. Hmm. And, and they like entrepreneurs. Yeah. Well. I know you yeah. don't, but they do. <laughs> what, about, what about GSB and their 6% uh, acceptance rate? Well, I think your chances are better than 6% just based on the GPA and the, and the GRE. And then you've got a story that you could turn into a Stanford kind of story. If you could figure out some backstory as to why all this matters to you. Yeah, I think that's there. It's, I grew up in a small town working in a factory growing up and then I went to an elite school and then went out and saw those opportunities and at the end of the day, when you get back to it, that's what I love is working with people in that smaller business setting. Yeah, it's, um, it's not the secret sauce for Stanford. The secret sauce for Stanford is uh, what matters to me is becoming personal growth that uh, I have achieved through immersion in politically correct situations that has led me to become more aware, more active, and more helpful to others. You don't state it that way, but that is the DNA of a Stanford essay. John, you're shaking your head yes or no? No, you're right. You're either a victim who's overcome right. your victimhood or you're helping yeah. victims or, you know, there is this, it's true. It's this whole PC thing out there. Uh, I got to tell you, having met a number of Stanford MBAs, they, they didn't have- how did, they, how did they get past the filter? Yeah. I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anyway, that's why. So you're not a natural Stanford thing, but they're they're not crazy about what I just said. What I just said is an easy way to both characterize and a, a little bit parody their admissions program. They, they're open to real solid, high performing sure they are. guys like you. Because because they wouldn't be placing so many people in uh, PE firms, hedge funds, uh, yeah, and, and you've and also managing jobs and and VC, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> you also you also hold out the promise of being a guy who's going to make a lot a lot of money. Yeah, but that's I, not the point. I agree. No, but, but that's not the that's not a point you're allowed to articulate. No. Right. I think for Stanford, though, if you look at the fellowships like we talked about, it seems like they're really just want brand presence in the Midwest. And that's when you think about a story for anyone that who's watching totally from true. the Midwest. Yeah. That, and that, may, that. that may give you another five or ten points on whatever yeah. Sandy's odds are for Stanford, frankly. Okay, so my advice for Stanford is just tamp down the possible salesman part. <laughs> Okay. Be, be self-confident, but don't, get, don't let people think you're cocky or arrogant. Of course. Yeah. Great. Okay. I think uh, 
Ben, you're getting in. I'm going to tell you, I think, really, I do think your big choice will be if you don't get into Harvard or Stanford, whether or not you wait no, man, or you take what, on the Chicago wait. Wharton deal. If you don't get into Harvard and Stanford, wait. Wait know, another year, right? Yeah, reapply. And reapply. Chicago's okay. beautiful this time of year. You'll, yeah, yes. I know. This time of year is not when classes are in session. People forget. Wait, Stanford, Stanford graduates late. <laughs> And it is beautiful out here in California, let me tell you, okay? Look at, look at the ambient light in John's uh, uh, little uh, man cave there. Hey, Sa Sandy, hey, I just got back from my yoga. Uh, look at this guy. Life is good, okay? Yeah, <laughs> living your best life. Good for you. <laughs> okay, I think this is turning from uh, yeah, sweet right. to uh, <laughs> confectionary sugar here. So hey, I'm ben, ready to... Good luck. Adios. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, you're a really solid candidate. You're, you're going to get in. And I, I really think if you don't get into Harvard, Stanford, the question is, do you wait? Sandy's saying, yes, wait and reapply. Yep. On the other hand, <laughs> Chicago and Wharton will allow you to achieve your dream anyway. Right, right. I don't think you're thinking on that one. I don't have any answers. All right. Hey, good luck to you. Thank you guys so much. You have a great rest of your day. Bye, all. Yeah. Bye. Sandy, thank you uh, okay. again for a terrific uh, Friday with Sandy. Yeah. And for everyone out there, thanks for watching. Great. Bye-bye.